oh, I thought she yeah. was just like being a Yes. And, you know, and is already so married and secretly engaged and pregnant. No, guys, no. I'm I'm literally just, I'm going for a coffee and I'm crying the whole way there right, and I'm right, crying right. the whole way home and two days after it. Does that make you feel any right. better? I'm Shel Burke and you probably know me from a little dance show called Dancing with the Stars. What you don't know is that I have been in and out of therapy for basically my entire life. I've been sober for three years now and I have an amazing new obsession that I use to help process my feelings, diamond painting. And I wanna share my new obsession with my celebrity friends while trading stories you've never heard before. This is Diving Deep. I am Amanda Klutz. I have been a Broadway performer, dancer, actress, singer. The issue most important to me right now is staying positive through grief and loss and how to move forward. I know you're probably wondering uh, what this arts and crafts I am. slash painting canvas is. I started yeah. it off for you, but I wanted to okay. give you a musical note because I know you love music. I do. And this is something that has been very therapeutic for me. It's like a puzzle. I love rhinestones. You can't take the rhinestone out of the ballroom dancer over here. No, so. you can't take a rhinestone out of any dancer. <laughs> <laughs> so you wrote your amazing book, which you know I listened to, and Thank I you. was, oh, I was so emotional. I don't think I've ever cried so much. Uh, I don't even know how you were able to get through it, um, but you did, and you told your story so beautifully. Thank you. And it was so relatable. And then on top of that, you do something like so vulnerable, like Dancing with the Stars and the vulnerability that you have to have when you do that as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that was just a continuation of the grief yeah. grieving process and yeah. healing process as well? I think one of the things I've learned is that grief and healing is not something that you do for a year and then you get like a certificate saying like, <laughs> you done. did it. Yeah. And I think this is important about grief is that you feel like, ah, oh, I possibly can't talk about it again, or mm -hmm. what else can I, I've, I've cried about it, I've talked about it, and people are probably sick of hearing me cry and talk about it, but it's not that. It's what I've learned is that the more you express it, the more you release, and the more you're able to keep moving forward and, yeah. and change and grow and evolve and not be stuck. I guess just give to people who may have not read your book yet, what your book is about and like exactly how, I guess, you know, everything happened. And we were in New York City and uh, this is like early March, like, you know, when everything on the news was very scary, but also in Europe still. And we were packing up our apartment because we officially were going to make the move to California. And we were living at the time at my, at my good friend Zach Braff's guest mm -hmm. house. And so we came back and two days later on my birthday, March 19th, um, Nick just started not feeling good. He just was really tired. And then for the next, like, basically whole week, he was really exhausted all the time, just, like, super tired, wouldn't get off the couch. And then one day he's changing Elvis's diaper and he faints. Oh, wow. And, you know, Nick was 6'5", so when he fainted, it made a very large sound. So we go to urgent care. He comes out. They say they wouldn't even do a COVID test on me. I haven't been around anyone that has COVID. They have no symptoms of COVID. They think I might have pneumonia. Here, they gave me some meds. They wow. told me if I'm not better over the weekend to come back to the emergency uh -huh. room. He got worse over the weekend. So we were like, all right, let's 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 go to the emergency room. I took him to Cedar sinai uh -huh. In the first 18 days, he got a fever, got sepsis, died on the table, had res was resuscitated, put on ECMO, got a blood clot, had his right leg amputated, a heart ma a pacemaker, a oh feeding tube. His fingers and toes were completely black. And... Um, he was on dialysis. That was 18 days. Un until he was tested negative three times for COVID, not on a COVID floor, is when they first allowed me into the hospital. And it was because his leg was being amputated and they didn't think that he would make it. So I was allowed oh, to come in gosh. to say goodbye. Yeah. Do you remember the last words that you guys exchanged before all of this happened? I don't. Mm -hmm. It would have been when I was dropping him off at the emergency room. I know I told him, I'm going to just park the car and take Elvis for a walk and call me if it's going to be like a couple hours emergency rooms always take the longest time yeah so I feel like that was something I didn't think that I wasn't going to of pick course. him back up I know we didn't hug or kiss because he it was clear that he was sick like 
even just pneumonia. Right. You don't. I didn't want to get, wanna get yes. Elvis sick, so I don't think he said. I mean, we definitely didn't hug or kiss. He definitely didn't hug or kiss Elvis. The last time we talked was when he called me at um, 4 a.m to say that they were putting him in a medically induced coma and on the ventilator. And I know I said, I love you then. And he said, I'm scared. And I said, I'm scared too. We fully didn't, I didn't really even understand what a ventilator was. Like, you don't think that's going to be the last time. Even when he said, they're going to put me under, they said it would be seven days, maybe 10. And I was like, okay. But like, it's 4 a.m. And you're really not fully understanding anything. But, you know, you don't know these things. You know, it's things you learn in life, I guess. Would you um, want Elvis to read the book eventually? Yeah, I hope he does. I hope he does. I think, um, I do think it's the best way to fully understand what happened to his dad because the details in this book are so extraordinary because it 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 was so in my brain. I mean, we started writing two weeks after Nick died. I knew everything. I knew every number. I knew every medical term. And think about it. You know how like time goes by and even in a year, you're like, I don't know. You yes. Know. Like, am I making it up? Or, yeah. What, yeah. What song did we do that to? Totally. Also too? Oh, oh, there's yeah, no yeah, way yeah. I know anything. And such a, a silver lining and blessing of me writing that yes. memoir is that it is all written down. And one day that little boy will know everything that happened, yeah. which is wonderful. Yeah. You know? And the details. And I think he's going to probably yeah. have a lot of questions. Yeah. You know? So how has, I guess, social media, right? Like Instagram has been, a lot of people have bad experiences, but I feel like you have such a great positive view on social and yeah. how it really has been your backbone throughout this whole yeah. process. As Nick's case got worse and things were going south, um, and as I was sharing more about what was happening, I mean, it did kind of just get into this horrible roller coaster. But once I had already shared, I felt like I can't stop sharing what's going on because the wave of support that was coming in from everyone on social media was crazy. Then that turned into an army of people singing with me at every day, 3 p.m., which, you know, turning Nick into a rock star. Like Nick died a rock star because the whole world was singing his song. His song was on the radio every day for 95 days straight. Um, Like the world turned him into a rock star, which was his biggest dream. I can literally say to him, you died a rock star, which is what you always wanted. Yeah. And remember, we were living in a time where nobody had anything and all we wanted was human connection. Totally. And when I was like, get on board with me every day at 3 p.m., a lot of people would write to me and be like, we set our alarms. This is all we, we're, this wow. is the only thing we have to do today. Wow. So like they got their whole families together yeah. and their dogs together and they like made it a dance party while they were cooking oh. dinner. Witnessing that and seeing then my followers grow from 50,000 to half a million. That's so crazy. Through those yeah. 95 days. Wow. That was all just out of pure love and positivity and optimism oh. and yeah. joy and yeah. human connection and community. Right. When you were writing your book, did you, did you already have like a close-knit relationship with your fans? Like was it an outlet, I guess, for you to express your actual, like, feelings. I realized when I started therapy after Nick died and I asked my therapist, I was like, I have to ask you a question. I said, I don't understand why, you know, everyone in my family was like, Amanda, you don't have to keep getting on Instagram. Like, why do you keep doing it? And I always said, I don't know. It just, all I can tell you is it makes me feel better. And I said to my therapist, I was like, why did that make me feel better? Just even getting on and telling a story and pressing send and telling a story about yeah. either Nick or I or his status or mm-hmm. needing help or whatever was going on or singing every day at three. Right. I said, why? And he goes, you don't know. And I go, no. And he was like, because it gave you a community in a time when oh. there was no community. He was like, if you literally so every alone, day, yeah. you weren't alone. You had yeah. 30,000 people singing with you yeah. every day, giving you support. Of course that made you feel better. And I was like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you deal with, like, the haters, I guess, on social media? What do you do? You block them? I mean, I love blocking people. <laughs> yes, I do. I restrict them. I block okay, them. Okay, good. Um, 
Sometimes, if I have the time, I like to put them in their place with a、and、kind、respond. smile. Okay.、Mm-hmm. People will say it to you over and over, and again, I'm saying it right now. It's like the one out of 200 comments. Like, why do you care that that one comment was a negative comment? Like, that's all when I focus on. 199 of them were like、You're、lovely、gorgeous. and supportive. Yeah. Yeah. I am newly divorced, as、yeah. you know,、yeah. and it's been the thought, the word dating, really. I'm just not ready. For、yeah. that, I guess what? How is that transition for you? Yeah, I mean, for for me with Nick,、um, it took me a while、um, to feel okay, and I I put my toe in the water, and it might even be helpful for you for a divorce. To the first couple of dates I went on were with other widowers. Okay, so that helped immediately, like break down、yes. that like discomfort of. I'm coming in with a lot of emotional baggage,、yes. and you don't、um, have to explain yourself. Yes,、yeah. you don't have to explain yourself. Got it. And I think you'll probably learn this because、um, after my divorce, it, it happened, and then after Nick's loss, it really happened. There's just a no bullshit. Like、no. I just, I just don't have time. That's what I feel like I'm going、bullshit. through. Yeah, it's just I have like, no patience. Like, yeah, it's really no, crazy. Like, then I'm like, wait, why am I so aggravated? Yeah, I don't have patience for small talk. No, I really don't. Like, let's get down and dirty. Yeah, talk about and some life experiences. Then we、yeah. can't.、I、exactly. Can't. If you <laughs> have not had some life experiences,、yeah. please try to find、right. something to talk like, about. Hi, that how are not, you? Yeah, tell me about your trauma now, or else、yes. you're going to deny it. Please it's leave. It's just because it's what makes. Makes everybody interesting,、it、and、is. and、yeah. I want to find out like who who you are now from that,、yeah. and like you know that that growth from that right, horrible low place.、Yeah. On the other hand, when you sit down and talk about losing your loved one, and you you start crying with somebody, then it like. Pretty much kills a lot of romantic vibes.、Uh, you know the criticism that came from Amanda、oh、Kluzer's dating not even a year after Nick has died. Well, I just nipped it in the bud, and I was like, absolutely not. No, 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 no. How did no. you do that? I started interviewing other widows live on Instagram, and I、okay. put a face to what people were calling a horrible thing. And I was like, let's talk about dating after you lose somebody. And I was like, let's like get into the honest truth about it because everyone's judging me and us.、Right. For all you know, for doing wow, this, and for the second I did that,、They、it all stopped.、Up. Yeah, that's the key to the negativity is really just yeah, being able address to it, face just address the fear. It. Yeah, yeah, address it, address it. Yeah, but like, oh, she she is trying to move forward. Yeah, it's really hard. Oh, she's having a really hard time doing it. She's she's not. Oh, I thought she、yeah. was just like being a and, yes, and you know, and is already so- married and secretly engaged and pregnant. No, guys. No, I'm. I'm literally just. I'm going for a coffee and I'm crying the whole way there, right, and I'm right, crying right. the whole way home. And two days after it, does that make you feel any、right. better? Can you judge me less now? Sometimes, so do you want to say like go f- off? Because <laughs> it's so hard for me not to like. It's so hard for me not to react and instead respond. Thank you so much for opening up your story.、Aww. It really. I mean, I. I I'm so inspired by by everything that Thanks, you、Cheryl. are stand for and your vulnerability and. So thank Thanks, you.、Babe. So how's、okay. it going over there?、Um, it's going great. <laughs> you did great. You did、well, more than any other guest has ever done. Oh so, really? Yeah. I'm a good you, multitasker, Cheryl. <laughs> you really are. I mean, you obviously are. You're、uh, like、but how do you feel? Do you know how they always say that if you're?、Um, You do know that when, if you really want somebody to open up, go on a walk or a hike or in a car yes, because yes, yes. you're doing something else while talking about it. Yeah, you're very smart. This、oh, is exactly this is exactly that you're putting. I wasn't trying to manipulate、uh-huh. you, but it manipulated me. It's very me. manipulative.、Yeah. <laughs> very manipulative. But、um, thank you again for sharing、thank、your story. You. Seriously, thank you're you. You're such an inspiration to me and、thank、to、you. so many people. So loved being here. Love Thanks for、there. having me.